What happened to Rob Reiner? One louder. Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These guys are 11. Hey guys, welcome to another video and welcome to what happened to Rob Reiner. Um, I did this with Tim Burton last week and you all seem to really enjoy that. And there's a lot of filmmakers people want me to just rant about and what happened to them and their careers and how did they start off so strong and become, well, what they are now. And Rob Reiner is the biggest puzzler for me, like huge puzzler. I don't know what the flying fuck happened to his career. He went from like this to like fucking hell, man. Like I have no idea what's going on with him, man. And the difference between him and Tim Burton, I believe Tim Burton can have a comeback. Tim Burton basically just started doing studio movies and almost became like a kind of like a sellout in a way. He just wasn't, he doesn't do the movies that made him who he is. Rob Reiner just started making shit movies. And like Tim Burton has made a good movie in like a decade. Rob Reiner hasn't made a good movie in almost 30 years. There is no hope for Rob Reiner. I have, I'm actually baffled that he was one of the great directors in the 80s. I'm baffled to even say that. But he is. He was one of the best. He made some of the great films in the 80s. And now he, he makes like Hallmark level movies. He makes like Lifetime Channel films. Like it doesn't even feel like the same director. Like I said, I can still see that creativity in Tim Burton's, even Tim Burton's bad films. I can still see that Tim Burton that makes him great. I don't, I don't see any of that in Rob Reiner. I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, so like Tim Burton's path, he just like you know he became like a studio director and didn't make movies for himself. Rob Reiner just completely lost his talent. Like I don't know where his talent went. I don't know. I don't know. Something happened to him in his brain or something. I have no idea. Like. I love to know people's theories, man. I just, I have no fucking clue. <laughs> like, he just went batshit weird with his movies, and they're just god-awful. And I don't ever see a comeback for Rob Reiner. Don't see it. And if he does get a comeback, I could be wrong. Maybe in the future he'll do a good movie. I'll admit I'm wrong. But for me to just take a, just, just guessing here, I don't see a single comeback for Rob Reiner. I think he's just lost. <laughs> like... But, like, it sucks. Like, the man started so strong. Like, his very first movie was one of the great comedies. The best mockumentary of all time. Of all time. 1985's This Is Spinal Tap. Fucking love it. Fucking love This Is Spinal Tap. This is a great movie. This movie was so good. Like, rock musicians all around the world said this movie is so real. It's so unique hysterical what a great movie this was his this was his start man this put him up there man like wow this guy you gotta watch out for this guy this guy is gonna be a talent and he showed it man like he's like oh I, i'm not just a like a comedy director i can do like serious movies he gave us then stand by me stand by me one of the great coming of age stories an amazing film just about these kids and they're going on this trip to find this dead body, and it's great. It's well acted. It's such a good story. It's based off a Stephen King novel, and loved it. It's like a lot of people's favorite films of all time, and I'm like, wow, Rob Reiner, he's not just a great comedy director. He's a great dramatic storyteller, telling real coming-of-age stories. What else can this guy do? And Rob Reiner's like, I, I can not only just do comedies, I can not only just do like a dramatic coming-of-age stories, I can do action fantasy stories. Then he gave us The Princess Bride. 1987's The Princess Bride. A lot of people's favorite films of all time. It's in my top 50 favorite films of all time. Inconceivable. Oh my god. This movie is like one of the most quotable, most enjoyable. It's probably one of the most fun movies ever made. And again, Rob Reiner, man. like the, Knocks it out of the park. This movie is... New generations of people are are still, like, coming in, like, you know, witnessing this movie for the first time, and 
it blows everybody away. Like, it's a beautiful romance story, a great action fantasy story, and it's a great timeless film for the whole family to watch in. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. And again, this just showed the sheer, like, fucking ferocity Rob Reiner had as a director. I'm like, wow. Like, he can do no wrong. Like, he's making coming-of-age stories and comedies, fantasy films. What the fuck else can he do? Well, he's like, hey, I'm going to make a movie for the ladies. Let's make a rom-com. The greatest rom-com ever, When Harry Met Sally. When Harry Met Sally. An amazing, beautifully written film about friends becoming maybe not friends. It's about these people who meet each other. They don't like each other. They have this theory that you can't, men and women can't be friends. But when they both break up with their loved ones, they actually start becoming friends. But then the friend, the friendship starts building to an attraction and maybe even love. And it's a great romantic comedy. Billy Crystal, Meg Ryan, excellent. The writing by uh, Nora Ephron, spectacular. Rob Reiner's direction is really good. There's a lot of improv improvisation in the film. And again, timeless. It's a timeless movie. What else can Rob Reiner not do? Like, what, what What else could he do? There's no way he can do a horror movie. Yes, he can. Fucking misery. <laughs> you. You dirty bird. How Flat out say, misery is might be my favorite Rob Reiner movie. It's right there with like the Princess Bride. Like I, I love Misery. This is a great. You could call it like a horror movie. You could maybe call it like a psychological thriller. But again, super different movie for Rob Reiner. Like this is more like scary and intense and stuff. He was more. He did more like lighthearted stuff. And when he did a dramatic story, it still had like sprinkles of comedy. There is nothing funny in this movie. This is about a man who is basically taken like. He's, like, captured by this woman who's got him bedridden and drugged, so he will rewrite a story in her vision. And, and incredible. James Caan, Kathy Bates as Annie Wilkes is an iconic performance. It's brutal. It's beautifully directed. Beautiful atmosphere. A great, great film. A film I watch usually every Halloween season. So was that it? Is this it? Is this the end? Of the Rob Reiner assaults? Nope. He's like, hey, I can do all that. But you know what else I can do? Courtroom dramas. That's right. You can handle the truth. You fucking people. Yep, just fucking love this movie. Uh, A Few Good Men, Tom Cruise, Demi Moore, Jack Nicholson. Spectacular film. This uh, this is uh, directed by Rob Reiner, written by Aaron Sorkin. The screenplay is where it really shines. It's a really good screenplay. It's a really kind of good whodunit, good corruption movie in the military. Uh, love this movie. Love the performances. Top fucking notch movie. And again, just an adds to the brilliance of Rob Reiner's film work. And then after this, he did North. Yeah, a lot of people say this is, like, kind of where it started. This is where the downside of Rob Reiner is. They show that, like, you know what? Maybe he isn't that great. And I can agree, North is a garbage movie. However, a year after that, in 1995, he did make a movie called The American President, which I think is his last good movie. And it is a very good, like, political, sort of romantic comedy with Michael Douglas and Nett Benning and stuff. Uh, what's his name? Um, Martin Sheen. Like, it's a really good movie. It's a good romance story. It's a feel-good movie. It's one of the last few movies with Michael J. Fox. I think it's very... I think another movie uh, written by Aaron Sorkin as well. And, yeah, that solid movie. So, like, what was that? Like, over, like, seven movies he made that were just knocked out of the park. Like, not just, like, good movies, but spectacular movies. And a lot of these movies are some people's favorite films of all time. So it's not like he was a director who just made, like, good movies, good movies. He made top-tier movies. Like, greatest of all time movies. And then fucking lost it. Just, like, like the movies he makes now and, like, movies that he made in the late 90s and 2000s and even 2010s were ridiculous movies. Like, absolutely ridiculous movies. Like, The Ghosts of Mississippi and uh, 
the fuck is the, uh, that the the name uh, Alex and Emma? Oh, terrible! Oh, the bucket list, the bucket list. It not only is it a shit movie directed by Rob Reiner, but it's a shit movie with Jack Nicholson, and Margaret Freeman. Rumor has it that movie is one of the worst pile of asses I've seen. I've never seen such a piece of shit, unlikable romantic comedy in my life. What a fucking terrible movie. And then the last movie I think I saw of his was And So It Goes. It was with Diane Keaton. Garbage. Feels like a fucking Hallmark movie. Just ridiculous. Like, and he doesn't seem to be doing much movies now. So, like, I could... He just lost his skills. Like, the movies he was doing were, like, again, like, fucking Hallmark-level shit. Like, this is... He's almost, like, like regressed. Like, he started so strong. And I can't even say, like, he sold out. No, he doesn't do big studio movies like Tim Burton does. And it's not like he does, like, risky movies, like, movies he has a passion for. And it's not, it's not even that. It's just, these are just bad fucking movies. And just any director with a half a brain should know these movies he's directing are garbage. Like, pure garbage. He even did a bunch of TV movies I've never seen. They look like they have a budget of $5,000. Like, what, what, what is happening here? Like, a lot, some directors, when they get older, they just want to make movies for themselves. Like, kind of Kevin Smith's doing. And I even say Kevin Smith has a decline. And maybe I'll make a whole video of what happened to Kevin Smith. But even with Kevin Smith, I can still see some passion. Robert, I don't see any of that shit. I, I, don't, I don't know what. Maybe he just doesn't give a shit no more. And he just does movies for the paycheck. Maybe that's what is happening. They just kind of give him fluff. They give him, like, these crappy movies no one wants drugs, and he's just like, I'll do them for the paycheck and stuff. Maybe he just doesn't give a shit. Maybe he just doesn't want to make any movies anymore. He's like, I'll just do these crap ones, get a paycheck, and move on with my life. Maybe that's it. Maybe he just gave up. Like, I don't know. Maybe he's just like, I don't give a fuck. I have no idea what happened to Rob Reiner. But he went from, like, top-tier, A-level director to fucking like D level director. And it's a little it's a little weird. But yeah, let me know in the comments below. What are your theories? What do you think happened to Rob Reiner? Why did he just lose so much in quality for his films? And do you think it's a personal thing? Do you feel like he just didn't want to make movies anymore? Did you just think or maybe he thinks the movies he's making are good and these are the movies he wants to make and I don't know. What are your thoughts and opinions? What do you think happened to Rob Reiner? Why do you think he's the director he is to this day? Comment below. Let me know. And as well as this video, please subscribe to this channel and join the dark side.